Cowboy Bebop episode 9, so last time was actually a pretty sad episode, man. Um, what I was told was that the whole like water thing that um, Spike was talking about was actually a pretty big principle of uh, Bruce Lee's uh, fighting style, man, which I, I did not know whatsoever. I think maybe I vaguely remember hearing that phrase, but I, I had no idea. So thanks for letting me know that. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool homage. Yes, also sorry for misunderstanding certain things last episode. Um, I think I covered it kind of well with the edit but yeah um i by the end and especially when i was editing i i uh, understood especially um in doing the dub when i talk about certain things i'm used to like doing it for subs so usually i can talk and read at the same time and i don't miss things it kind of happened a little bit last episode and thankfully it hasn't that hasn't really been a problem so far but yeah maybe i'll turn subtitles on actually but it would probably make it easier to sync but hey Apologies for that, but moving forward now, um, like I said, it's cool to see um, Spike be pretty kind and, and do things for the sake of others and not his own benefit. Like he could have totally, like when Jet was telling him about the value of those seeds, I think he said, what, 8 million a, pe uh, a seed or something like that? Something crazy. Um, Spike was like, huh. And then and Jet's like, so you have any? And Spike's like, nah, I don't. So it's, you know, he was, he was intending to do the right thing. Um, all along and even when in learning how valuable it was uh, pretty respectable man he's he's a good guy you know even if he maybe doesn't think so at this point so yeah I guess we'll see whatever's next man so let's go okay so I will be using subtitles here just so I don't like miss certain things while I'm reacting so to speak so beginning the episode in three two one That ending is so good, man. Hey, kind of... Huh. Who's speaking? Oh. Like drawing a message? What the hell? Oh my goodness. Wait, why? See, that's that's the shit that happened and made us think aliens were around. Huh. I mean, it's pretty low, but who's this person? Also, what am I looking at? Earthgate. Bebop. 
vacation. What? Is this person looking for the beep up? Why? Oh, so much for... Jesus. What the hell? <laughs> Thanks. I was going to say 10%, huh? Yeah. <laughs> really? I know. Formerly known as South America, huh? <laughs> I know this voice. Sounds like an evil mad scientist. Got to keep it clean. Hmm. Eight million Wulong. Oh my gosh. The thing is, he's probably not entirely wrong. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> She's right. I'm not a hacker. A <laughs> demented otaku. <laughs> oh, man. And his feet. Yeah, I was going to say, that's... That's definitely a remnant of Earth times. Ooh. Nothing good comes from the earth anymore. Huh. It's cool to see a little bit of earth. <laughs> yes, yes. Ah, right. We saw that in an earlier episode. Huh. Hmm. That's cool. I like learning about what happened on Earth. So 50 years ago, that's what happened with Zebra. And they went underground and they built these supercomputers somehow. Communicate with the people in space. Also, who is this kid? <laughs> what the hell? Whoa. Easy. Radical Edward. What the hell? All right, speaking of... Speaking of hackers... Yeah, I guess Radical Edward is a hacker. Not exactly a demented otaku. Maybe demented. <laughs> what the hell? Like an RC plane? Whoa! Well, I guess you're stuck there. Jeez, what the hell?
Okay. So, I'm guessing Edward hacked the satellite and drew all the animals in the South American land. Oh my goodness. Yup, that's Tyrannical Edward right there. All right. So wait. Huh. Jeez. Yeah, start with all that. <laughs> so Radical Edward seems to want the Bebop to come for them. <laughs> Seven feet tall. <laughs> I was the perfect hippie. Radical Edward. Huh. Three years old. So all the rumors, seven feet tall, three years old, like. No one actually knows about Edward. A drag queen. An alien. So Jet's getting nowhere with all that info. Ah, oh, man. Piokos. Are those a thing? Oh, those goggles are so cool. So that space is just what Edward sees when... Okay. Huh. Right, who is that saying that? Here, nobody here, always alone. Oh, wow. Oh, dear. I don't like how real that paper looks. Yeah, who is... It in. It's a CPU. I guess CPUs are the brain. <laughs> Only neater. Ha. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, were you actually named that? No. <laughs> yeah, not eating everything they have. Toy for Ein. Don't choke on it. Oh, God. Oh, wait. Right. They are snacks. That's right. Duh. <laughs> Drag queen alien. <laughs> oh, man. All those rumors. Oh, no. Yeah. So it was that. Huh. What's the CPU that drew those? Ah. This song.
Nice. Yeah. Uh oh. Huh. Yeah, the cops are in on it. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Bebop. We don't. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, okay, Faye. Yeah, you're very genuine. Ed's voice is great. Um. Yeah. Ah. It's on the satellite. I gotta say MPU, not MPU. It's cuter. Oh, snap. Welp. They all got kill laser. The voice crack. Impossible. Yes. Fucking Spike with a death wish, dude. In fact, he might actually have one. Jeez. You're a Hindu drag queen, seven foot tall basketball playing alien. Yeah, I bet. All right, Spike. Here we go. Your manual now. Mm, the thing is, what's the favor? <laughs> Faye, Faye really likes Edward, no. Like, oh, you don't even want to cut? Oh, let's go. All right. Oh, boy. Ooh, spotted. Well, Spike, uh, talk to MPU. Yo. Ah. Uh. Welp. Oh, dear. Welp, so much for not being detected. Jeez. All right, well, so yeah, so much for that plan. Time for expensive missiles. <laughs> Why did I get the cheap ones? Oh, Jet. Like, this is so, like... Like, the fact that there's no music playing when they're typically you'd expect it. And Faye! 
His voice is great. All right. Do your thing, Spike. Avoid lasers, bro. I guess they've got it handled. All right, download MPU. There you go. The thing is, will MPU want to leave? Huh. Ah, uh, yeah. Always alone. No one here. Uh-oh. Uh. Uh. A spy satellite. Ah, it was programmed to self-activate without commands. Well, like, huh. Ah, Spike gets it. Spike just gets it, man. Oh. Oh my god, Faye, stop it. Faye's really scum, dude. She's always trying to just say fuck it and just go. Welp. <laughs> Poor Ed. Oh, welp, Ed's gonna make you come back. As if Ed wasn't prepared. Oh, you gonna stop for Ed. <laughs> The plane noises. Uh, Ed? Ed? <laughs> uh. I hope that would short out your stuff, Ed. Well, guess you gotta take him. Oh boy, big shot. Shucks, howdy. Hot news. Speaking of hot news, this chick. <laughs> the way they handed that. Aww. Mmm. Round them. Get to the point. Ah, oh, man. Damn. Well, once again, screwed out of the bounty. Oh, what are they? Kids. Animals. <laughs> you got all three on your crew now. <laughs> How'd this happen? Oh, there you go. See? Yeah, I thought I thought Ed was a girl. I didn't want to say anything, but there you go. <laughs> Poor Spike. Yeah, we got Radical Edward on the crew now. Um <laughs> who's Spike revealed at the end he hates pretty much everyone. Uh, they've recruited so far, but I don't think he really means that. I don't know. He really did. He probably would just kick them off, but so we got Ayn, we got Fane, we got Radical Edward now, you know, hacker, uh, kid, you know, pretty, I'll be honestly pretty useful to have on the crew, like someone that could potentially hack into any, any enemy ship you come across or any system that you might need, like, like Brett, uh, not Brett. 
Jet's pretty tech savvy, but you know, Ed, Radical Edwards on a whole other level. Um, what was really interesting was learning about what happened to Earth. Of course, we know about the the Gate uh, catastrophe that apparently happened 50 years ago. Of course, that's part of the effect of why um, Zebra uh, ended up. Uh, as a result, not aging. So that was a callback to what we learned back then. We learned a bit more about that. We also learned humans went underground, developed supercomputers, and um, were able to communicate with the humans, I guess, that had left and went to space. Um, it's weird to think that, not necessarily the, the gate catastrophe thing, but um, might be a possibility in the not distant future, but um, who knows? Who knows if that will happen in my lifetime? Um, but yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. So I guess Radical Edward's been surviving on Earth this whole time. Probably, I mean, definitely no parrots, probably no family, just surviving. It was cool to see Earth as well, like just the the thing, all the stuff, the thing going going on, um, all the cultures like uh, together. Maybe, maybe some of them chose to stay behind, but really they were the ones left behind. I mean, this whole time we've seen everyone in space on different planets, different moons, and now to see Earth, it's kind of strange in a weird in a weird way man it was it was cool seeing like um cool to see Faye being like huh humans are weird to seeing like the the bird shaped like sweet snack of course we also learned about MPU this pretty much just CPU that was chilling on this weather satellite that was um designed to activate whenever it wasn't getting orders from earth anymore and i guess it became sentient at that point they said it was disguised as a it was actually like a spy satellite but um is it gained sentience or and just it recognized its own loneliness and, and even spike said like it drew those things on earth um because they wanted friends like and um you know it was it was kind of sweet to, to hear mpu talking with edward earlier in the episode and edward just not finding it like silly or ridiculous just just engaging mpu in conversation like because this is clearly a sentient existence um because of that they didn't get their bounty for mpu i think um like ed said they made a copy of an mpu and so maybe that's the one they tried to get for the bounty but of course they weren't able to do it uh they probably took it anyway just because it's dangerous i guess in their eyes but um yeah i wonder if mpu is sticking around but it was it, it's cool to to see that um consideration and dilemma you know, it kind of reminds me of a. Uh, Near Automata, Ghost in the Shell, like what is, you know, what is considered, um, life? You know, if, if it's a machine or, or simply an intelligence. I mean, if honestly, if, of course, you know, we, this is a classic thing, but you know, if it has the capacity to have something equivalent to emotions and consider its own place and, and not want to be destroyed, like, come on. I like Edward a lot. She's like, just her whole demeanor is so just like compared to like all the crazy and messed up stuff going on in this world like edward seems so like carefree and just having a great time just like hell yeah i'm gonna hack the bebop and like oh we're not coming for edward ooh la la like just completely like i wonder like what edward's gone through to like just be be how she is um yeah because I, I imagine you know not Clearly not having parents or family, it's, it's probably been very hard for her and um, being who she is and, and focusing on her hacking and uh, that kind of stuff probably is uh, what keeps her going. But yeah, I wonder wonder if they ever, ever uh, get into her backstory and stuff. Uh, her voice is amazing. It's like, this dub is really good, man. Edward's Edward's voice is, is pretty pretty damn good. I like the, the voice crack whenever she says certain things. It's adorable but yeah i think that's all i gotta say about this one man it's cool so edward yeah is that person i keep seeing in the opening i'm like huh well i wonder we're gonna meet that person and there you go it's edward so it looks like we've got our crew fully assembled which is uh pretty great man so can't wait to see wherever they're gonna go to next um how edward's gonna play a role and how everything's gonna work out and yeah i can't wait man so thank you so much for watching with me as always i'll see you next time Peace.